I am Inian and today I will be talking about uh, some meta programming APIs which are there in JavaScript like object.observe and ES6 uh, proxy. It is actually okay, ES2016 proxy. So, uh, so have you guys uh, heard about object.observe or proxy before? Uh, okay, so these are uh, some of the APIs that's exposed in JavaScript which lets you do some interesting stuff. Let me just give you a brief introduction of what each of them are. So the first is object.observe. So assume you have an uh, normal object, say OBJ, and you want to observe some changes that are happening to your object. So what, uh, what this API does is that it gives you a callback function, and uh, as things keep changing in that object, you can observe the changes in that callback function. So there are different changes that you can observe, like if your property gets updated, a new property gets added, or if a property gets deleted, and so on. All these callbacks uh, happen to your fun uh, function that you specify. So for example, after attaching this observer, and if I just say obj.bar equal to 2, then uh, what happens is that your function gets this uh, change notification saying that a new property called bar is added to your object. And what is the new value of it and what type it is, whether it's an add operation, update operation, delete operation, and so on. So this is object.observe. And it was mainly created, uh, so the three people championed it initially. And uh, one of the main use cases was that uh, all these MVC frameworks were coming up just then. And uh, one of the things that they had to do was to figure out how to keep the model and the view in sync. So one of the normal ways to do this is that you say, assume your model is a JavaScript object. And you want to observe if the model has changed. And if your model has changed, I will go and update the view. So Angular has a complex mechanism of uh, dirty checking where it uh, used to see if your model has changed and it'll go and update the view for you. Uh, so the browser vendors were like, especially people from Chrome were like, okay, why don't we expose this natively from the browser? So that's what they did uh, using object.observe. So yeah, it was the, supposed to be the next big thing. Everyone was uh, so excited about it. This is a new way for uh, yeah, different frameworks used to do this dirty checking in different ways. Like Knockout did it in a different way, Ember did it in a different way. And people thought once browser vendors expose this, it will be a standard way to sort of do this. So it, uh, Chrome was the first one to ship it. It came out in Chrome 36 some time ago. And uh, it was also supposed to be a part of ES2016. And uh, there was a proposal for it, which uh, I think it's, uh, it was in the stage two process approval stage for, yeah, to get into ES7. Yeah. 2016. Sorry. Yeah, 2016. So, <laughs> and recently, there was an update to this proposal. So this update basically said that, OK, we are removing object.observe. So, that's the next big update. So they basically, the developers were like, uh, so we initially thought Polymer was going to use it. But we found out that after Polymer, become, Polymer became 2.0, we did, didn't end up using object.observe. So I don't think it's really useful and all that. And uh, they also gave uh, statistics like, I don't think anyone is using this in the wild because we uh, Chrome did some telemetry, uh, telemetry or something and found out less than 1% of the users were using it. So. I don't think it's really useful, and they just pointed us to some polyfills, which could polyfill the behavior for object.observe. So yeah, I don't. Uh, that shows like even if a feature is supposed to be on the spec, it there's a proper spec and stuff for it, but still it got you know kicked out just within a day. So uh, I I was using this in one of my uh, pieces of code, and I started looking at alternatives. So. This another thing called proxy, which is another meta programming API. And uh, it's been there in Firefox for quite some time as a non-standard feature. But it recently got uh, accepted as a feature. And I think in Chrome, it's behind a flag right now. In Canary, it's there without a flag. And Edge has already implemented it. So this is going to be a standard feature. And uh, proxy works in a slightly different way when compared to uh, object.observe. So uh, OK, forget the handler part of it. So assume you want to observe or proxy this target object. So what you do with a proxy is that you say, I want to a uh, new proxy of target, which is the object you want to observe. And uh, you pass in a handler to it. So this handler is an object which can, has, which can have multiple properties. 
So suppose you have the get property. It, these properties are called traps. So these traps means that uh, you want to trap some specific operation on your object. So if you implement the get property of it, it means that I want to trap all accesses to the object. So in this case, for example, I'm saying if there's someone is trying to access some property of me, call my function. That's what the get function is saying. And I'm basically, I'm checking if the property that you're trying to access is already there in the object. If it is there, return it, or just return 37, because why not? <laughs> yeah, so pretty interesting stuff can happen because of this. So if, say, p of a equal to 1, and p of b is undefined, so if you access p of a, uh, p is the proxy here. So p of a will be 1, of course, but p of b is undefined. Now, if you check c is in p, uh, which basically checks if C is a property of B, it'll return false because it doesn't have a uh, property C. But if you actually go out and print P of C, it'll print 37. So that's because the proxy is saying that, okay, the property is not there and I'll return 37. So yeah, there are some crazy things that you can do with proxies. So uh, yeah, so it sort of uh, behaves, some things are similar to object.observe. So one thing which is different from uh, object.observe and proxy is that when you get notified of your changes. So for uh, object.observe, the callback is called asynchronously. So you just say you want to observe an object and you get notified later on when some, someone is uh, making changes to it, like accessing it or something, not access, sorry, uh, delete or updating it and so on. Uh, this actually, uh, this notification comes at the end of each micro task. Uh, so uh, without going too much into it, it's so basically when uh, all uh, your JavaScript stack is empty and it's sort of the same time when your promises get resolved, or something like that. So for proxy, it's way more powerful than object.observe in the sense that it happens synchronously. So if someone is trying to access some property of an object and you can just deny it or something because uh, the, it, it, the proxy basically intercepts, it's not just an observer. So one thing that's different between object.observe and proxy. Second thing, uh, these are the type of things that you can observe using uh, object.observe, which is adding a property, update, delete, when someone changes the property descriptor and setting a different prototype and so on. Uh, these are the stuff that you can uh, observe with proxy. I won't get into all of them, but uh, so these are different traps that you can implement. So if uh, your object contains any of these keys, then it's, uh, you can do something with it. So suppose someone is trying to set a different pro prototype for your object, you can intercept and do something you want, you want at that point. So yeah, one thing is that you can't observe the window, any global object. So that's just one caveat that's there. But in proxy, you can pretty much observe, uh, you can proxy almost any object that's there. You can even proxy an object which is a proxy to another object, it's a proxy to another <laughs> object, and so on. So it's pretty interesting if you actually think about it. So yeah, there's some neat stuff that you can do. So, so yeah, it seems like proxies can do almost everything that object.observe can, but there's just this one small thing. Uh, probably it's a deal breaker for you, depending on. So suppose if you have a script, say you are including jQuery, and you want to observe who is using jQuery, or like if there's someone, uh, some someone who, suppose you don't want anyone to add, say, a custom property to the jQuery object, like you don't want to use any jQuery plugins or something. So what you can do is like you can just create an object.observe, which you can't anymore because it's deprecated and stuff, but just to for, uh, highlight the difference. You can attach a observer to jQuery and say that, okay, you can keep logging uh, accesses to it. Uh, but if you have a proxy, if someone accesses jQuery.custom property, you won't get notified because they're accessing the target object directly. So if they do jQuery proxy.custom property, then you will get the log. But uh, so this is just one small difference. And oh, I forgot to mention one thing before. So in terms of the number of things, what you can observe in using object.observe, you can't find out if someone is accessing your property. So uh, in object.observe, there is no way to, the, no equivalent of get, basically. Yeah. Can you, uh, yeah. Can you do like jQuery is proxy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can. So that is possible. So one of the different, it might break in some weird cases, like if you're doing like type of checks and uh, those kind of things. But uh, especially if you're playing with host objects and stuff like that, a lot of stuff break because, yeah, they are host objects. Uh, 
yeah, these APIs are fun. So you would learn a lot of, about what happens sort of in, inside the browser by playing around with stuff like this. So suppose you have an, if you have an array A and you do an object dot observe of A and you just print out the changes. And I'm basically doing A of zero equal to high over there. So I'm adding a new property, uh, new element in the array. So you can see that the observer gets triggered and you can see that, uh, okay, the, probably the browser is adding something to the array and it's also updating the length property of the array. So some stuff that you can see. And yeah, if you attach, say, observer to, uh, say, you try attaching a proxy to the window object or something, as you keep typing in the window uh, console, you see it, it, get, it getting triggered a lot of times. So it's probably fun to figure out why each print happens. And yeah, even like simple things like function dot prototype dot to string, you can see that uh, like this is a node. Uh, if you fs dot read file is supposed to be a native function, but if you do a two string of it, you can actually see the internal source code of uh, not the entire implementation, of course, just the JavaScript part of it. So yeah, you can do a lot of cool stuff. There are other APIs like this which you can use to uh, inspect your own program, monitor it, intercept it, do stuff like that. Uh, that's about it, I think. Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter. If you want. Yeah. <laughs> Use case for proxy. So, uh, so I was actually doing something in uh, JavaScript security. So, I was able to. Uh, so, there's this attack called DOM-based cross-site scripting. So, one of the ways in which that happens is when uh, an attacker uses some sensitive operation, uh, sensitive object, say the location or the URL of the web page, and he uses uses it. The developer, not the attacker, sorry. The developer uses the location object in, say, eval or something like that. So I want to sort of figure out who is accessing my location object. Can I do that uh, in a nice way? So I just attach a proxy to that, and I can figure stuff like that out. It's not uh, very mainstream use cases like that, but yeah, it's, there's some fun stuff that you can uh, do with this. Yeah. So you can, you can proxy. You're saying you can proxy like window.location? Yeah. So in, like in, in tests and stuff like that? So you can use it for testing and stuff like that? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, cool. So if, uh, as he mentioned, the suppose if you replace window itself with a proxy to a window and you can just let the program run, you figure out what are the all uh, accesses to it. Other st weird stuff to do this would be, say, enclose the entire program with a with, sta with statement and the with parameters a proxy. And yeah, so there are a lot of weird stuff that you would obviously not do in production code, but for analysis and those kind of stuff, it gets pretty interesting. Can you show something like uh, stop, stop in, in spite of my window or something? <laughs> You can't, it really comes down to who gets to inject their code first. So if the attacker injects his code first, right? So and he, there's not pretty much nothing that you can do about it. So he manages to uh, say modify some object. You won't, and he manages to do that in a safe way. I mean, uh, there are some APIs which he can use to you know like uh, prevent extension of an object or if yeah. So if your code runs later, there's pretty much nothing that you can do about it. Yeah. So you say proxy is supported in? In uh, Chrome uh, 50 it is. So that's a canary version it is. And in Edge it is. Firefox has been having it for a long time. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I would assume so. Uh, I haven't actually measured it because I'm just using this for like all analysis tools and stuff like that. It doesn't matter much. What? It's not correct. There are use cases where it uh, so it also depends on uh, number of objects you are proxying and all that stuff. So if it's pretty small, I guess the browser vendors would have optimized for that use case. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure anything like this is going to just completely ruin any chance of uh, using like the, uh, the built-in stuff for uh, optimize like all the optimizations in the browser. They, 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 it's just, just going to throw them out like not nah, you're on your own. The JIT stuff, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All that stuff will probably. The browser can't make assumptions that it would have if you had not used that. So yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.